Today, there is a ton of digital services that can provide the soundtrack to your main character lifestyle, but amidst all of the Spotify, Apple Music, and SoundClouds of the modern age, there is a quiet trend towards one of the oldest audio technologies available, vinyl. Now, I'm pretty comfortable in my 30-year-oldness. It's been 30 years. And just in my lifetime, I've seen cassette tapes, CDs, and MP3 downloads on LimeWire that irreparably destroyed more than one home computer. I've seen them all rise and then become almost totally obsolete within a decade. And somehow, the technology that preceded all of them has made a comeback nobody could have expected. Coffee shops, boutique stores, and dorm rooms across the world are living like it's the 70s again with vinyl spinning in the background. So as people clamor to buy record players and vinyls of their favorite artists, we wanted to figure out what was driving this movement. So today, I think we can all agree we have reached peak musical convenience. Streaming. You don't even have to lift a hand anymore to listen to your favorite artists. All you have to say is, hey Google, play some Rick Astley and you've successfully rickrolled everyone in the vicinity. Today, you can soundtrack your entire life with lo-fi beats to study to, happy folk vibes in the park, and jazz in the background of that perfect dinner party. You like jazz? And yet vinyl, arguably one of the least convenient ways to listen to music ever, has been steadily on the rise since the 2010s and beyond. And in 2020, for the first time in over 30 years, vinyl records started outselling CDs. It is now commonplace once again to see all the latest hits selling as LP records, which I have to say feels a little weird. I'm not saying that we shouldn't put the Catch Me Outside girl on vinyl, but maybe not everyone needs to have a vinyl record of their music. Now, if you're not into LPs yourself, maybe this is not a trend you understand, you might just think that, hey, this is the boomers craving a bit of nostalgia, racking up those vinyl sales. But it is the most unexpected demographic imaginal that is driving this resurgence, the millennial. Not the trend-setting Gen Zers with their TikTok dances and whatever it is that they're into right now. The generation that straddled the internet's come up has made a comeback nobody could have expected. We were born into an analog world but came of age into a digital one which might be a part of the reason why we have made this move. We have been taught our whole lives that technology was the solution to all of our problems. We love the new, the convenient, and the dazzling, which to a degree has become our reality. But all this manufactured obsession with the latest flashy gizmos has spawned a bit of a counter movement in the opposite direction. We're fed up with cheap experiences and products that demand our attention because many of us know deep down in those childhood memories that it wasn't always like this. And vinyl has become almost a symbol of everything that we lost. With so much of our lives being digitized, there is something genuinely special about going back to a more tactile, grounded experience. Experience. The whole process is a bit romantic and almost meditative. You start by flipping through a drawer of these beautiful decorated record sleeves that you've carefully curated over the years. You select just the one that calls to you in the moment and you delicately and lovingly place it on the player before gently dropping that diamond needle on its ridged surface. And then you just sit back and listen. Start to finish, not bouncing around, not some weird shuffle thing between different artists that you don't even know the name of. You are just listening, which I don't think is even a thing anymore. When was the last time you sat down and just listened to music with no studying going on in the background, no dishes being done, no party or beer pong happening, just listening? Wow, I think it's, it's probably been like at least five years for me. That's crazy. Unsurprisingly, this kind of routine started getting extra popular right in 2020, that year that we can't seem to get away from. You know, when everyone was stuck inside their home going through all their personal mental health crises and rethinking everything about everything that they've ever done, ever. For many of us, 2020 became a time of reconnecting with the simple things, including a genuine and personal musical experience without all this distracting technological stuff. But fuzzy feelings aside, there's also a narrative that vinyl actually sounds better than digital. But the thing is, uh, it's not actually true that vinyl is definitely superior to digital in terms of audio quality. What did you say? 
This one's gonna ruffle some feathers, so we're turning off comments for this video to prevent sort of any kind of drama. I'm kidding, of course, come on. All attention is good attention for an influencer, am I right? Yeah. The idea that vinyl just sounds better comes from the fact that digital often compresses sound to save on storage. A lot of this is just a matter of nixing certain frequencies that human ear can't hear. Although, depending on the audio file that you get, you might be missing out on more details than just that. But when we're talking about high quality MP3s or uncompressed formats such as CDs or Tidal, the vast majority of us are not going to notice any real quality difference between that and vinyl. Especially if your sound system consists of a Bluetooth connection and maybe a pair of AirPods or something like that. Meanwhile, there are things that actually make digital more pure, so to speak. Like the fact that digital can record a larger dynamic range, unlike vinyl which sometimes forces artists to play a bit more moderately, without as large of a difference between the largest or softest note, lest the record skip or the sound get distorted with a sudden change in sound. Now obviously, we are not an audio engineering YouTube channel, so that summary of music science stuff is probably not PhD level, but it is a mere taste of the ongoing and raging debate within the music loving community. But in the end, vinyl and digital will be more or less functionally the same in terms of quality. Both of them are capable of reproducing amazing sound, albeit with some fairly nitpicky differences that the majority of us would never probably notice. Vinyl has a warmer quality to it and that classic raw crackle, its idiosyncrasies are part of its charms, whereas CDs will be just a about the closest thing to what musicians would actually hear when they're in the studio. You can do an insane amount of research into the pros and cons of each if that's something that you're super into, but ultimately it boils down to personal preference. But with the trend, as it emerges, we often see the worst that capitalism and consumerism has to offer. Because the vast majority of vinyl sales are not to people indulging in their audiophilic needs with an exclusive LP from their favorite psychedelic Japanese folk band. The people who want to appear like they have a sophisticated love for music. There are a number of people out there that are buying records to have a genuinely intentional mindful musical experience. But sadly, most people buying records today are not getting that experience. For starters, with vinyl's renewed popularity, they're getting freaking expensive. For example, you've dished out the $20 to $80 on a record, depending on whether or not you bought it used. Then you have to figure out somewhere to store it, plus your record player in your millennial 500 square foot apartment that costs you an arm and a leg in rent every month. And sadly, we do not have time to rip into these new record players that have come out to meet this new demand at a lower price point with their integrated speakers and Bluetooth and whatnot. But a very long story short, corporations like Crosley and Victrola are capitalizing on this trend like crazy, selling trash players that sound like trash and uh, might even be damaging your records. So don't go buying one of those. Also a tangent to this tangent, I really wish I didn't have to say this, but don't buy a portable record player. First of all, anything portable is going to sacrifice quality for that convenience and they're not even all that convenient because we're already currently owning things that are way more convenient for that. Like, I don't know, the phones in our pockets. The whole point of a record player is to have a more thoughtful, intentional musical experience not to annoy people in the park. Like the fact that we have Bluetooth speakers allowed in parks is already bad enough. Don't bring a record player there. Let's have an outlet. Do you guys mind if I plug in my power cord here? I guess I'll just vibe to nature. But just like the other people in the park, you might realize, perhaps, that your actions don't just affect you. See, vinyl is very difficult to recycle. As Father John Misty says in one of his songs, try not to think so much about the truly staggering amount of oil that it takes to make a record. A lot of resources are used to make these things. New records just aren't something that we should be buying unless we're going to love them and use them and treat them with care and respect. If you're buying records just to hang them on your wall as decoration, you're literally just using them to signal your audio sophistication. I mean, if it's a used sentimental album or something or it's broken and it was gonna go to the landfill anyway, sure. But these are first and foremost art meant to be listened to. Now don't get me wrong, I love the idea 
of a record player. You're flipping through the albums, you pull out the LP and the little sleevey thing, you do the brush stuff, you know, the satisfying moment when the needle touches down, you know? The romantic in me wants a record player. I want to be that guy with a wall full of music in my living room that could take like two gigabytes of my iPod Nano. But you have to really think about it because record players and the vinyl they require are another one of those iconic dust collecting appliances. One summer you really get into the Beach Boys and you decide that this is your new personality and then five years later the record player is just a glorified side table and your collection is just an excuse not to buy real art for your apartment. It is more important for us to find ways to enjoy music that suits our lifestyle and our interests than to show off your hipster credibility by investing in a costly device that you're never gonna use. Maybe that means investing in a quality record player that you'll love for years, but maybe that means just putting your money into a different hobby that you can more fully embrace. Now, if you are in the market for a record player, might I humbly suggest that you keep an eye out for a high quality vintage turntable. You'll wanna do some of your own research into this one to find what works for you, but for starters, stay away from the all-in-one turntables. Something good with a separate receiver and speakers can last forever with the correct maintenance, all the while looking way more legit and sounding better than the new stuff. And when buying records, don't buy them off Amazon. If music culture is what you're looking to get into, then go to a record store, you know? Buy it from the artist directly. These are the people and the places that are actually making the art possible, so put your money where it matters the most. Don't be giving money to Mr. Bezos! But hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, remember to like it, hey, subscribe to the channel, all that stuff, and if you do, then we'll see you next Wednesday.